manager. On. Manager. One. On. Ones. One of the big things that change when you go from managing ICs to managing other managers is the way that you conduct your one-on-ones. It's seemingly a small thing, but the way you do it can have massive ramifications for your ability to be effective. So I think it's worth spending a little bit of time pondering, and that's what we're going to do today. So in what way does it have to change? Well, recall the objectives that we spoke about when we talked about one-on-ones in general. It was about building psychological safety and trust. It was about having a space to give feedback, to problem solve together, to work on things, to develop an employee's growth, to figure out next steps on, on actions that they were being blocked on. And in general, having a meeting on a recurring basis, that's the engine that drives a lot of the other important things that you need to do. These objectives don't change when you go from managing individual contributors to managing managers. The thing that changes is the context at which you're asking those questions. So recall that previously your individual contributor were only responsible for their, well, individual contribution. But now the person that you're having a one-on-one -on -one with uh, is responsible for an entire team. And so the scope of the conversation grows. Uh, and that's really the big difference. And the last couple of episodes, we've talked about a bunch of different ways you can think about how that scope grows. So we talked about uh, the output uh, of, of an organization versus the output of a person. We talked about the role modeling and accountability. We talked about creating uh, the space for output and creating a stage for it. So if we apply that lens and those attributes together with the fundamentals about what a good one-on-one -on -one is, what falls out of that, I think, is pretty close to what a good manager-on-manager one-on-one looks like. So let's, let's take this from a slightly different angle than we normally do. Uh, and I would characterize what we normally do at this channel is me just babbling on endlessly about what I think the right approach uh, is or how you should think about what the right approach is. But what we should recognize is that when you're going from managing ICs to managing managers, when you're making that transition, one of the big things there is that you already have manager on manager one on ones constantly. It's the one on ones with your manager. And so we can already draw some learnings from that. And that's what I would like us to start with. I would like for you to start with a little bit of an exercise before we get to the meat of uh, this session today. And that exercise is to reflect on the one-on-ones that you have with your boss. Uh, and what about the things that you're talking about and the way that you're talking about it? And what are the things that you talk about in that meeting and the ways that you talk about them are things that you want to bring forward to the one-on-ones you're going to be having with the managers that now report to you. you. You can think about things like cadence, structure, agenda, psychological safety, if they bias for talking about the individual or talking about the team, if they're very task-oriented or if they're very relationship-oriented. You can reflect about if they bias towards action or if you don't come with any outcomes. And you can reflect on what you feel leaving your one-on-ones with your boss and what you feel going into the one-on-ones with your boss. And none of these things necessarily have to be the answer for how you do it yourself, but they give you clues both about what your preference is by, by what you're feeling when you're doing that reflection. So before we move on with this video, let's just pause for, I don't know, three minutes. And we're not going to pause this video for three minutes because I, I don't... I don't want to look at the skip rate of what that would look like. But, you know, you pause the video for three minutes and you, you do this reflection. And then we're going to circle back here. I'll, I'll be right here waiting. So don't worry about me. I have plenty of stuff to do. But you take three minutes. Then we circle back here. So three minutes starting now. Oh, you're back. Perfect. Let's uh, talk a little bit about... Uh, some of your reflections. The first one is think about how much time is allocated and how you spend that time and how you want to spend that time. How much time is spent on delivery? How much time is spent on status? How much time is spent on problem solving? How much time do you spend on strategy or people or product? I 
try to do an hour per direct report per week. That's where I feel comfortable because that gives me 30 minutes with that person to deal with the urgent things that are on the table and things that we just need to work through together. And with COVID, uh, this is one of the few forums where you have dedicated one-on-one -on -one time because you can't just run across each other in the, in the hallways anymore. And so you need that 30 minutes to work through status, basically, and you work through uh, all of the different items that they have issues with that you can help them with. And then you have another 30 minutes so you can dedicate to more long-term uh, growth challenges or growth opportunities. <laughs> Ironically, if I'm the IC, I kind of like 30 minutes uh, because I also feel like there's an enormous burden uh, that I feel on myself to plan an hour if I've got an hour with my boss. So it might be worth reflecting for you on with individuals you have on your team, not only what's best for you and them in terms of getting the time allocation, but also what feels comfortable for them. Now, this isn't different between IC and manager, but I find that with managers, an hour is much more uh, almost necessary than it is with ICs, where we can get away with 30 minutes every week or even like 30 minutes every two weeks. And the other point I made was like, talk about the, the think about where you want to allocate your time. And I think this is more about self accountability. So recall that you're now accountable for quite a large scope, right? And so you need to get an understanding of all of that aspects of your scope. And if you're somebody that gravitates toward technology naturally, if you don't reflect a little bit about your own patterns and you don't think explicitly about how you spend your time, that time is going to go to tech, I, I bet you. I know this because I really enjoy talking about people and I really enjoy helping my team figure out how to navigate managerial questions. And if I don't check myself, then that's where we're gonna be spending our time, despite the fact that I might need to talk strategy, we might need to talk architecture, we might need to talk technology or insights or whatnot to be able to move the mission forward. And so having a reflection on how you wanna spend your time in a normal one-on-one -on -one, and maybe even ahead of very important one-on-ones, like think through again, like how do you want to allocate your time at a macro level before you get into the nitty gritty of the agenda? I think that's important. On this note, you also need to think about if you're getting through the issues that you need to get through on a weekly basis. I have direct reports where we never run the full agenda and it's something that can become a real issue if you don't deal with it. And the way it becomes a real issue is because they actually need your insight on those areas but they might not want to rush through the agenda or they might have uh, more important things that they need to talk about. But folks on their teams might be waiting for your input or they might be in some way blocked on your ability to work through that agenda. And as we talked about, I think, two times ago, we have uh, clarity and we have motion as two of the most important objectives as senior leaders to infuse into our organization. So if you have a one-on-one, -on -one, scheduled recurringly with one of your direct reports and there are agenda items either the same ones or new ones that you never get through then you really need to do a bit of a retrospective on that one-on-one -on -one and think about how you should be changing it so that you can manage to get through all of the things that you need to get through. <laughs>